Today we are going to discuss the measures of center tendency or measures of location, which is a, one of the fundamental concepts in descriptive statistics. Now the purpose of doing the measures of central tendency or the measures of location is to identify a number which is close to the center of distribution of observation and which represents them all. Now what does it mean is that in the measures of central tendency or in the measures of location in these calculations, we are to identify a number, we have to find out a number which can represent all of the observations that we have collected and this number should be close to the center of distribution of observations. And why this is known as the measures of location? Uh, because we have to identify the number or we have to identify the point in the spread or in the distribution of observation where the cluster of observations is located. Because we are identifying the number which can represent all of the observations and the number which is close to the center of distribution and the number which is uh, in the cluster of observations. So that is why this is also known as the measures of location, right? So the measures of central tendency or the measures of location, the purpose of these calculations, the purpose of these statistics is to find out, to identify a number which can represent all of our observations. And this number is close to the center of the distribution of observation and this number is also uh, located where the cluster of observations is located. So this is the purpose of measuring uh, central tendency or measuring location of a distribution of observations. There are three common statistics by which we can measure the central tendency or by which we can measure the location and these are mean, median and mod. Mean is the most familiar and useful measure of central tendency, and this is the most widely used measure of central tendency, and it is calculated by dividing the sum of a set of observations by the number of observations, right? So a mean value, and this is a, the term that we commonly use in our daily life, that we, are, we calculate the mean number, we calculate the mean values. So how do we calculate the mean values? We divide the sum of a set of observations by the number of observations. So this is the formula for calculating the mean value. And the symbols for the mean value in statistics are mu and x bar. So mu is used for representing the population mean. So when do we use this number? When we have taken observations from every unit of the population, then in that case, we are going to calculate the population mean directly, right? So this is the absolute or direct population mean and this is represented by the symbol mu. And if you are unable to get observations from every unit in the population, then we get observations from a sample of the statistical population. In that case, we are going to calculate the sample mean, right? And this is represented by the X bar. And this X bar or the sample mean, it's not the direct calculation of uh, population mean, rather, this is the estimate of population mean, right? So mu is the direct calculation of the statistical uh, mean of the population and x bar is the direct estimate of population mean. It is not the absolute population mean, rather it is the estimate of population mean. So this is the difference between these two symbols. Now let's see how these are calculated. So the formula are same, whether it is population mean or it is the sample mean, the formula are same. And we can see that this is the sum of observations divided by the total number of observations. So mu letter represents population mean, summation X means sum of observations, N means total number of observations. When we are calculating the population mean, we write down the total number of observations by the capital N. And when we take the observations from a sample from the statistical population, then we are going to write down the number of observations by small n, right? So this is the only difference. Otherwise, the calculation and the formula is same, only their symbols are different. So this is how we calculate the mean value. Now we take an example for the calculation of the mean value and we are going to take the example of the maximum diameter of the cap of five specimen of an edible fungus. So we have five um, observations with us 
And these observations are, are about the variable, which is the maximum diameter of the gap of edible fungus. And we have these five observations as 8.5, 9.2, 7.3, 6.8, and 10.1 centimeters. Now we are interested in finding out the mean value, right? The mean maximum diameter of the gap of these fungi. And for that purpose, we are going to apply the formula for calculation of mean value. And we are going to use the uh, formula for sample mean. And x bar is equal to summation x divided by n. And the summation x is the sum of the observations. So the observations are 8.5, 9.2, 7.3, 6.8, and 10.1. We take their sum, and their sum is equal to 41.9. So this is the value of our summation x. Now, what is the value of n? We have five observations, so the total number of observations is five. Now, let's put these values into the formula. So we have 41.9 divided by five, and the answer is 8.38. So this is the mean value for, this, um, for these observations. Now, we have to write down the result in a proper form in a proper sentence and we are going to write down the result as the mean maximum diameter of the gap of edible fungus is 8.38 centimeters now again you have to be very careful when writing down the results so calculating the mean value calculating a number is not sufficient you have to describe what that number is and for that purpose you have to write down the results in the form of a text in the form of a sentence where you have to describe your results remember you are a, you are going to become a scientist you are going to work in the field of biology and you are not um, a technician who is just going to calculate a number you have not just to calculate the number you also have to describe what that number is about. So here you have calculated a number, which is 8.38, but you also have to describe what this 8.38 is. And for that purpose, you have to write down a proper statement of the results, which in this case is mean maximum diameter of the gap of edible fungus is 8.38 centimeters, right? So this is the right way to do it. Now let's do another example for the mean value. And this is the number of spikelets in five flower heads of annual meadow grass. So the previous example was about a measurement variable, and this one is about a count variable, right? So we have the number of spikelets, and the number of observations are five, and the number of spikelets are 28, 16, 24, 31, and 27 from five different flower heads of the annual meadow grass. So we are going to uh, calculate the mean value by the same formula, summation x divided by n and summation x is 28 plus 16 plus 24 plus 31 plus 27 which is equal to 126 so this is the sum of all the observations and then n the total number of observations are 5 now we are going to put in the values and we are going to calculate the mean value which is 25.2 and again we have to put down the complete statement of the result which is mean number of spikelets in flower heads of annual meadow grass is 25.2. So this is going to be our result statement for the mean value. So these two examples are where we have a small number of observations and we can calculate their mean values directly. Now we are going to see the data which is cropped, right? So uh, we have the group data, which is arranged in the form of a frequency table. Because um, whenever you're doing research, you don't have only five, 10, or 20 observations. So usually you have a large number of observations. And what is the best way to represent those observations is, as we discussed in the previous lectures, that the best way is to make a frequency table. When the observations are being repeated, again and again into our set of observations, then it is better to represent those observations to represent that data in the form of a frequency table. So for this group data, for the frequency table, we have another formula for the mean value. So here we have the formula for calculating the mean value when we have the grouped data in the form of a frequency table. So mu is equal to summation fx divided by summation f, and x bar is equal to summation fx divided by summation f. Now, summation f is the sum of frequencies, right? 
So summation F is the sum of frequencies, which is equal to the number of observations, right? So N in this case, uh, remember the formula for calculating the simple mean or the uh, mean for the ungrouped data. This is summation X divided by N. So N is the number of observations. So in the formula for group data, N is replaced by summation F and summation F has the same meaning. Summation F is actually the total number of observations in our grouped data. And we have the other term into this data, which is summation Fx. So how we are going to calculate the Fx values and then how we are going to take their sum, we are going to see in uh, the next slide. And for this purpose, we are going to take the example of the length of 100 shoots that we had previously discussed. And here you have uh, their frequency table and you can see that their frequency, uh, their observations, they start from 68 and they go up to 80 millimeters. And we have frequencies of each of these observations. 68 is present only one time, 69 is present two times in the total set of observations. So what we are going to do is we need the value of summation fx for the calculation of mean value. And for that purpose, we are going to add a column into this table and this column is fx in which we are going to individually multiply the frequency of each class with its frequency class so here we have these uh, calculations so 1 multiplied by 68 so what is 1 1 is the frequency of class number 1 and 68 is the class um, mark or the midpoint of class number 1 which is 68 so 1 multiplied by 68 then we have 2 multiplied by 69. So 2 is the frequency of class number 2. And 69 is the frequency class of our second class interval. So 2 into 69. Then we have 4 into 70. 4 is the frequency of our class number 3. And this class number 3 is represented by the number 70, which is the x value for this class. So we have 4 multiplied by 70. Now we calculate these values for each one of these rows and for each one of these classes. So here we have these um, multiplication. So one multiplied by 68 is 68. Two multiplied by 69 is equal to 138. Four multiplied by 70 is 280. Seven multiplied by 71 is 497. 11 multiplied by 72 is 792 and so on. So we calculate these um, Fx values for each of the individual frequency classes, right? So this is how we calculate the fx. Now, what do we need in the mean value is the summation fx and the summation f values. And how we are going to get that is we are going to take the sum of our frequency column, and this is going to be our summation f value. And we are going to take the sum of our fx column, and this is going to be the summation fx value. So in this case, the total number of observations, which is the sum of frequencies, is equal to 100, and the summation fx is equal to 7400. Now we have these two values. We are going to put them into the mean formula, and we are going to get the results, which is x bar is equal to 7400 divided by 100, which is equal to 74. So our result is that mean shoot length is 74 millimeters. So this is how we are going to calculate the mean value for the grouped data, the data which is arranged in the form of a frequency table. Now we have another scenario. We are going to take another example. And this is the number of wood ants captured in seven pitfall traps, right? So here we have these seven observations. Now we are going to calculate the mean value and the mean value is 39.3 ants. Now remember the definition of the measures of central tendency that we were to identify a number which is close to the center of distribution and where this is the number where the cluster of observations is located. But in this case, we can see that uh, six out of seven observations are away from this mean value that we have calculated. So why we are going to have this mean value, right? that why do we have the mean value, which is actually not the center of distribution, 
and which is not the point where the cluster of observations is located. And why is this so? Because mean value is greatly distorted by a single exceptional value. We have a single exceptional value here, which is 202. So this 202 is uh, a different value. It is an exceptional value. And this value actually uh, distorts the mean value, right? So what do we do in this case is, we are going to use another statistic for the measure of location, and this statistic is the median statistic, right? So in this case, although mean value is the most widely used uh, value for the measures of central tendency, but sometimes uh, the mean value is distorted by some exceptional values, and the mean value that we calculate, it is not in the center, and it is not at the point where the cluster of observations is located. Because in this case, we can see that a cluster of observations, six out of seven observations, they are not close to the mean value, right? So mean value doesn't lie at a point where do we have the cluster of observations and why? Because it has been distorted by a single large value. So the, the statistic for locating the uh, central tendency or for finding out the measures of location, the statistic that we can use in this case is the median value. The median value is the middle observation in a set of observations ranked in magnitude, which means that they have been arranged in ascending or descending order. So what is the median value? Median value is the middle observation, the observation which is physically located in the mid of the distribution of observations, and when these observations are arranged in the uh, ascending or descending order, then the observation which is physically present in the middle is known as the median observation. Um, in this case, we have the observations starting 5, 4, 12, 9, 15, 8, and 202. So what is the middle observation in this case? 9. So is this going to be our median value? No, this is not our median value. Why? Because the median value is that value which is physically located in the middle when the data is arranged in order of magnitude. And we can see that this data is not arranged in the order of magnitude. Therefore, 9 cannot be the median value. So for calculation of the median value or for finding out the median value, what we have to do is we have to arrange this data. And now we have the data arranged from the lowest to the highest observation, 4, 8, 9, 12, 15, 25, and 202. So now we have the data arranged in an ascending order. Now the middle observation, when you have to locate the middle observation, we are going to divide the number of observations by two. So we are going to take half of the number of observations. So these are seven observations that are divided by two, so 3.5, which means 3.5 observation on left side, one, two, three. So the 3.5 observation should lie within this observation and 3.5 observation on the right side one, two, three, so this is going to be the 3.5th observation. So this is going to be the observation which has 3.5th observation from the right side and 3.5th observation from the left side. And this is the median value because this is located in the middle and the observations are arranged in an order of their magnitude. So this is the median value in this case. And again, you have to represent your result in the form of a proper statement. And the statement for this result is going to be the median number of wood ants captured in pitfall traps is 12, right? So this is going to be a proper result statement in this case as well. Now, the question is that if the number of observations are even, right? In the previous example, we had seven observations, and it was very easy to locate the middle observation, which was 3.5 observation from right side and 3.5 observation from the left side. But what if we have the number of observations in even numbers? Like in this case, so we have six observations here. Median is equal to the mean value, mean of the values of the middle pair. So in this case, when we have observations which are in even number, then in that case, uh, we are going to locate the median value as the mean value of the middle pair, 
right? So we are going to find out, we are going to locate the pair of values which is located in the middle, and then we are going to take their mean value. So this is going to become the median value when we have the number of observations which are even. So n by 2 is, uh, in this case, is 6 by 2, which is 3, which means third observation on the left side and third observation on the right side. So we have a pair of observations, pair of the values located in the middle, and we are going to take their mean. So 13.2 plus 19.7 is 32.9, and 32.9 divided by 2 is 16.45. So our median value for this data is 16.45. So this is how we calculate the mean value for the observations which are present in even numbers, right? And now we are going to discuss our third uh, measure of central tendency or the third measure of location. And this statistic is the mod value. So mod is simply a class in a frequency distribution which contains more observations than any other, which means uh, that the observation which is most frequently found or which is more frequently found than the other observations is known as the mod value. Like in this example, this is the length of 100 shoots. And in this example, you can see that we have the frequency classes and we have their frequencies. So what, uh, which one of these frequency classes has the highest number of observations or which of these frequency classes is most frequently found, which has more higher number of observations than other? And you can see that this is the class 74, right? So the class interval of 73.5 to 74.5, which is represented by the class mark 74. So this has the highest frequency in this frequency distribution. So therefore, this is going to be the mod value. And again, like the median value and the mean value, you have to give the proper result statement in this case as well. And you're going to say, that the model shoot length is 74 millimeters, right? So you have to be careful about giving the result statement. So model shoot length in this case is 74 millimeters. The mod value is also defined as a distinct peak in the histogram of frequency distribution, right? So what is mod value? Mod value is that value which is more frequently found than the other values in the frequency table. And the mod value can also be identified through the histogram of frequency distribution. Like we have the histogram of the example that we were discussing, and the example was the shoot length. So this is the histogram of frequency distribution of shoot lengths, right? And uh, can you identify a peak in this histogram? Yes, so here is the peak. So this peak value is our mod value, which is 74. So we are going to say that the model shoot length is 74 millimeters. So a mod value is, the, is that value in our set of observations which is more frequently found than others in the frequency table or it is the most frequently found value in the frequency table. And the mod value can also be defined as or it can also be identified through the histogram by a distinct peak, right? So the mod value is a value which shows a distinct peak in the histogram of frequency distribution. This is also known as the mod value. Now we are going to define the frequency distributions uh, in light of the mod values. So the first type of the frequency distribution is the unimodal distribution. So a unimodal distribution is a frequency distribution with one mod, one mod value or one distinct peak in histogram. So that set of observations, which has only one mod, mod value or one distinct peak in the histogram is known as the unimodal distribution. Uni means one, like this one, right? So this is the observation in which we can see there is only one distinct peak. So this is uh, referred to as the unimodal distribution. Then we have the next type of distribution, which is the bimodal distribution. So a bimodal distribution, as its name indicates, bi means two, that it is a frequency distribution of two mod values or two distinct peaks in histogram, like this one. So here we have a histogram in which we have two distinct peaks. So that is why this type of distribution is going to be known as a bimodal distribution. 
and we have if we have multiple peaks then we are going to say say that it is a multimodal distribution so a multimodal distribution is a frequency distribution with more than one mod value or more than one distinct peak in the histogram like this one so here we have multiple peaks so if we have only one peak in the histogram this is referred to as the unimodal distribution if we have uh, more than one peaks, then this is known as the multimodal distribution. If it has two peaks, then this is known as the bimodal distribution, right? So we have these three distribution uh, models over here. The unimodal distribution, the bimodal distribution, and the multimodal distribution. And today we have uh, discussed the measures of central tendency or the measures of location. So measures of location or the measures of central tendency, they are the fundamental type of the descriptive statistics and they are used to identify the number which can represent our entire set of observations. And the most common method is the mean value and the mean value is calculated by taking the sum of observations divided by the number of observations. But if we don't have um, a uniform distribution and when we have a few exceptional values in our observations which can distort the mean value, then we can use an alternative measure of uh, location, which is the median value, right? And median value is the middle observation, which is physically located in the middle of the observations when observations are arranged in their order of magnitude. And then we have the mod value, and the mod value is th that value which is fr most frequently found or more frequently found than the other values in the uh, distribution table or in, it is also defined as a distinct peak in the histogram. Like we can see here that we have the unimodal distribution, bimodal distribution, or the multimodal distribution. So these are the measures of central tendency or the measures of location in statistics.